But people forget that sometimes. They are animals and they are primates. We may be very smart primates, but we are primates. And so um, uh, I think the human psychology, uh, so social emotionally, we are primates. We are not very different from a chimpanzee or a bonobo. Intellectually, we are maybe somewhat different, and, and certainly we have language, which is very special. But um, the way we react, like loving, hating, being jealous, uh, having attachments, all these things are very similar to what you see in the primates. But physical fights are actually not so common, but it's certainly confrontations between them. So that's the, the alpha male is a combination of physical strengths, so they need to be healthy males, but also a political process. The females is a very different business. So you have alpha females also in a primate group. Every primate group has an alpha female. Um, age is actually a, a uh, a plus for females. So it's not a plus for males. When males get older, they get kicked out of their position by younger males. But uh, females can be alpha for a very long time because age is a, is a positive thing for them. And so uh, I describe, for example, Mama, the alpha female of a chimpanzee colony who was alpha female for 40 years. Um, and she was 59 years old when she died. So she could barely walk anymore. She was almost blind, but she was still the alpha female of the group. You mentioned Mama, and I think in the history of ethology, that moment, that re-encounter she had, uh, this chimpanzee had with, uh, with the biologist um, jo uh, Jan van Hoff, yeah. when it was the last time they saw each other, she was really ill, mm -hmm. and she was not even recognizing him at first, but the moment he, she does, it's beautiful it, it's so much emotion there uh -huh. tell us more about that story yeah so that uh, she was dying and and she was isolated from the group at that point um, because she was in in a night cage and normally we never go in into a cage with a, an adult chimpanzee and, uh, adult chimpanzees are much stronger than we are so adult males are considered five times stronger than the human male and females three and a half times stronger so so you don't go in with a chimpanzee, with an adult chimpanzee. But because she was dying, and Jan van Hoof, the professor, knew her for 40 years, he knew her for a long time, he, he went in with her. And so at some point they embraced, and they touched each other, and they embraced, and you see that Mama is actually calming him down. I think Mama was called Mama because she was a very maternal figure. And uh, I think she may have noticed that the professor was very nervous coming into her cage and she calmed him down and you see that movement. Now, what I find interesting about that whole encounter is that people were very moved seeing it, uh, emotionally moved. And I could understand that. But people were also very surprised. They were surprised how human-like the expression of a chimpanzee is, facial expression and hand gestures. And, and that, I found strange, and, and that's why I've termed my book Mama's Last Hug, because we have said for 50 years that chimpanzees are our closest relatives. So why are people surprised that their expressions, their faces, are very much similar to ours? They have the same muscles in their face. Their face communicates emotions, like in us. Very much the same sort of emotions that they have as we do. And so uh, I was a bit surprised that people were surprised that it was so similar because um, the emotional life of a chimpanzee is very similar to ours. Yeah, the strange thing is that uh, when I was a student, we were not allowed to talk about emotions in animals. So, so Darwin, much earlier in the 19th century, he did talk about the emotions of animals. Then we got a period of about one century where the behaviorists like Skinner and so people like that, they, they said, no, animals are more like machines, very Cartesian. Animals are more like machines. They, we don't talk about emotions, we don't talk about consciousness, we don't talk about thinking, uh, none of that. And now we are back to a time that we talk about the emotions. And of course, with animals like the primates who have the same facial expressions, it's very easy to make these comparisons and to say, well, they have this emotion and that emotion. Uh, but at the moment, we're also talking about fish having emotions and bees and ants and yeah, invertebrates also. And so the, um, the sentience of animals, sentience meaning do they have experiences, inner experiences, uh, is now being recognized for lots of species. And, and it has, of course, ethical consequences because people don't always realize that. But if you talk about the feelings of a lobster, so to speak, 
maybe you need to take that into account when you kill a lobster. So, so it has ethical consequences and it's a big point of debate at the moment. Well, we, we are born with empathy. All mammals have empathy in the sense that they are sensitive to the emotions of others. And they are affected by the emotions of others. Now, there was a time that psychologists did not want to talk about animal empathy because they had a very high level definition of empathy. They thought empathy is that you imagine how someone feels. Empathy is that you imagine their situation, which is very complex. And, and I don't think uh, many animals do that. But many animals are very sensitive to emotions. So your dog is sensitive to your emotions. And, and there's actually experiments that show that dogs, if you are crying, uh, the dog will come up to you and lick your face or put the head in, in your lap. And so many animals have that kind of empathy. And in chimpanzees and bonobos, it's very common what we call consolation behavior. Someone is distressed and is crying and others come over and embrace them and calm them down. That's also an act of empathy. And so empathy, we think, exists in all the mammals. There are now also some studies in birds at, at the moment. So uh, empathy is very widespread and we think it started in evolution with maternal care. So whether you're a mouse or an elephant, if you have babies, you need to react to their emotions when they're cold or when they're hungry. So females need to do that. That's also why oxytocin, which is a maternal hormone to some degree, uh, oxytocin is involved in empathy. Why females have more empathy than males in general. Uh, this is true for many species, including the human species. And so uh, empathy is a, is a biological characteristic.